this afternoon, and this afternoon, willingly, willingly, I open up my spirit. I open up my spirit. I am ready to receive. I'm ready to receive the incorruptible, the incorruptible, ever living, ever living seed of the word of God. Seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put it somewhere and give Jesus a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as, as, as you are doing that, now, let's continue as we receive the servant of God, Bishop Dr. Lucas Chenga, yeah. upon this altar. Come on, celebrate the servant of God. Celebrate. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Amen and amen. 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 As we remain standing, let's lift our hands to heaven. And let's worship the Lord. Tuendele, tunapoendelea kusimama tuinue mikono yetu tukimwabudu Bwana. Nimwabudu nani mimi? Kama sio wewe. Nimwabudu nani mimi? Kama sio wewe. Hakuna mwingine. Waku abudu hila ni wewe Jehova hila ni wewe Jehova. Holy Spirit of the Living God, we worship you. We give you all the glory, we give yes. you all the praise, we give you all the honor, yes. we give you all the adoration. There is no other God like you. There is no other power like your power. You are from everlasting to everlasting, Lord. To know you is to have fullness of joy and to trust in you is to have perfect freedom. Holy Spirit, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you and lay our lives before you. Yes. We come into your presence with humility. We come to your presence in total surrender. We come to your presence assured of your goodness and of your mercy and of your love that is from everlasting to everlasting. Holy Spirit of the living God, we come to you because you are gracious. We come to you because you are kind. We come to you, you are our healer. We come to you, you are our deliverer. We come to you, you are our advocate. Yes. Holy Spirit of the living God, you are the perfect peace. You are the joy and the center of our strength, O oh God. Therefore, mighty God, as we come into this altar, we submit to your power. We submit to your power. Us. We submit to your goodness and your mercy and the grace that has been upon our father, Bishop Dr. Mark Karioki, the grace for which we have flourished, the grace for which we have been established, the grace for which uh, your work is prospering in this land uh, and in this nation and in the international community, the word that has brought a global transformation and has made the lives of many be renewed uh, and be strengthened and be empowered uh, even in the midst of difficulties, uh, in the midst of challenges, uh, in the midst of pains, uh, Holy Spirit Spirit, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we glorify you. Holy Spirit, we adore you. Yes, Thank you, our God. Father, we pray that you adjudicate in the court of heaven this day. That my Father, by your own grace and by your divine power, every case that will be presented in your court during the transaction of this message, Father, it will be judged. Amen. It will be determined yes. and resolved Amen. once and for all. Thank you, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth Amen. and the meditation of my heart yes. be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, Amen. my God and my Redeemer. Amen. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. And Amen. 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 Let's be seated. Uh, I'm so humbled this morning to be back home uh, for those who don't know my history and, and my father, Bishop Dr. Makarioki, it goes back 40 years. I had just joined Form 1 in Nakuru. And he had started some meetings. And we used to go for overnights. 
tulikuwa tunaenda usiku lunch our meetings mikutano ya lunch hour and many other meetings na hata ya jioni and uh, by god's grace na kwa neema ya mungu i just loved my father I did not want to miss. That time I was not a mature Christian. So sometimes I even had to say things that are not true. So that I don't miss the opportunity to go. I just wanted to hear him. And his message got into my system. And I believed in him so much. Such that whatever he said was final. Was final. If somebody else said anything, that appeared to be better than what my father said. It didn't matter. So in 1988, he was speaking about what now you call the Life Celebration Center in Nakuru. That was just a vision. There was nothing. He just said what he wanted to do. And he said on that Sunday, I'll never forget. If you don't have faith for what I'm talking, because there is nothing that exists like that looks like what I'm telling you. I have enough faith for myself. And I have enough faith to carry you. He put his hands at the back. And me, I was seated somewhere right at the back. And in the spiritual realm, I jumped in the back. And I started to be carried. There was nobody who could see it. People could not see it. But me, I started on an amazing journey. Because I was believing God since I was a child. That I would go overseas. And I would go and preach the gospel. So even when people were choosing from for what to do. I did not choose anything. Because it was already cut out. That I'm an international preacher. So my father is asking me, where have you chosen to go for high school? And I said, dad, don't worry. But by God's grace, I passed from four. And I was admitted to high school. But I said, I'm not going. Kwelel is in Gilgil. So my dad said, you have two choices. You either go to high school or you go away. You have to go somewhere. So I decided to go away. And when I went away, I did not need to explain to anybody when I'm going for Kesha. I did not need to explain to anybody when I'm going for meetings. I became a real person going to those uh, activities. It did not take two years from when I jumped on the back. And I got a, a, a ticket, Nikapata ticket, full sponsorship. And 33 years ago, I went to the UK. Na miaka iliopita, UK. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm echoing what our sister, Reverend Eva, has said just now. Narudia kile dada yetu, Reverend Eva, amesema sasa hivi. That he's a true prophet. Ya kwamba, yeye ni nabi wa kweli. Every time he has spoken in my life, kila wakati ya menena for all mwa. those years, kwa miaka hiyo yote, it has come to pass. Ya metimia. I never even, you know, anytime, even if we are just having lunch, Unajua, wakati and he starts speaking, kumakula, I engage in my spiritual realm, Mimi because I know that what he's going to say anajua, will anasema. happen. Amen. Amen. So let's give our daddy a hand clap. Tumpigia baba yetu makofi. It Amen. It is the labor that he has done kwa sa- that has given us this grace. Tunafraya kwa kasababu ya kazi ambayo meifanya. And it gives us the opportunity na inatupa nafasi even to stand here today. Ya kusimama ha- hapa. Every yo. place I've gone in the world Kila mahali nimeenda ulimangu. And I've gone to many places. Na nimeenda mahali kuingi. It has been under his instruction. Imekua ni chini ya magiso uh, yake. And his, uh, his, uh, he o- he'd open the door. Na ange nifungulia mlangu. He opened the uh, door to America over 20 years ago. Ali nifungulia mlangu wa pale marekani ya zaidi ya miaka 20. And I've been going two or three times every year. Na nimekua nikienda marambili tatu kia mwaka. This year I had a privilege 
to go twice, one in White House, and in the next one, I was actually sitting and talking in the same conference with another African president. So what I'm trying to say, if you have not believed in the grace in this house, please, my brothers and my sisters, do yourself a favor. Say to God, Father, you brought me here. I don't have enough faith to tap into all the grace. But because I've had Reverend Eva, and I've had uh, 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 Bishop Lucas, help me, Lord, however it works, I may benefit from the grace of the man of God. He is my father. I want to connect. I want to benefit. I want to shine so that your glory may be manifested in my life. Somebody say a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have not started preaching because I have an amazing team that has joined me. It would have been very many this morning if from my team. But because of all the problems that some of you may not be aware, but there was load shots everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's why we even arrived late. Uh, so some of them were not able to get here. And the reason we are here First of all, is to fulfill the assignment I've been given by, by my dad. But also, Reverend Dan was there in Glasgow. When our father opened Scotland for me. And he said, go and prosper. And fulfill your purpose. And you'll always be the head. And not the tail. So as we have been praying, God gave us a vision which I've shared with him in detail. That Scotland, Scotland was actually a mother or a father of international missions. International inventions. Many things you enjoy today. Without going into details, maybe uh, Reverend, I'll give you a barcode which they can scan and get all the details. They did a lot of things. They sent missionaries all over the world. They had churches you could not walk for a kilometer without finding a church. This side, this side, that side, that side, and sometimes one in the center. These people loved God. They experienced mighty revivals. And some of the revival came to this country. And many of us benefited. If you hear of Alliance High School, if you hear Tomotomo Hospital, Kikuyu University, Kikuyu Hospital, Hospital, time fails me. Time fails me to say what the Scottish people have done for us and for the world. Unfortunately, the church is almost dead. The statistics are saying we only have 1.2% of the total population that go to church. So for every hundred people, only 1.2 is what? <laughs> Yeah. One. It's one person. It's one. For Ni every mtu hundred people we see, one goes to church. Kwa watu moja, and ni it's moja almost now kanisani. three generations of people who have never heard about Jesus. Na kuna vizazi vitatu vya watu ambao hawaja wa imsikia Yesu. So many people just now as I talk to you, Kwa hivyo watu wengi sasa hivi nako nena nao. They go to witchcraft. Wanaenda kwa wachawi. Divination. Pia uaguzi. Spiritualists. Kwa watu ambao wanatumia maroho. And many other places to look for help because everybody needs some spiritual help. Na mahali pengine kuingi kutafuta msaada maana kila mtu anatamani ana, ana sana kupata msaada wa kiroho. So when our daddy consecrated me as a bishop last year. 
I got a revelation to start buying those churches and sending missionaries starting from missionaries from Kenya and from all over the world. We have started to buy them and you get to know more about that. It's not, that's not for today. But I want to introduce this team who is with me because when I go back to Scotland, they are the people who will help you here. So we have our dear sister, uh, Madam Priscilla Mwangi. Madam Priscilla is our executive director here in Kenya. And she works uh, a lot in coordinating what we are calling Fire for Scotland. She will be able to help anybody who has a vision through the blessing of our father to come the way Reverend came last year. We'll be having a big campaign that will start in, in May all the way to October next year. We'll help people with visas and everything. We'll also, if we get to know that you are coming early, we can try to help with accommodation. So our father will launch the campaign in May. And we'll hit the ground until we convert, uh, we, we write the fire in the, in the country. My son, Michael, Michael, you can stand. He's our chief operations officer. Yeah. So <laughs> Mike, Mike will help in making sure that all your documents and everything needed is done properly. And even if you are not sure but you want to start indicating early, uh, you start, uh, they will give you com how to communicate through uh, Reverend. Just start communicating. Just make an inquiry. Just say, I want to pray. I just want to believe God, even if you are not sure. And when it comes to the passport Sunday, now you have a reason to bring your passport. Uh -huh. Ah, you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Ikiwa utataka kuingila kwenye hiyo shugli ya ya kuenda Scotland ama mambo kama yale utaongea na Reverend Dan atakusaidia na Mike ndi atatusaidia kwa hiyo mipango. Amen. Amen. I think I've said so much for today. Mm -hmm. So we go now to the message. Tutaingilia ujumbe. Have one phone so that I can see the time. Or oh, is there any other place I can see time? Okay, I'll be given a phone, that's fine. So I bring special greetings from my lovely wife, Helen. She's not with me, I've left her in Scotland, I just came this week. They have just planted a new church with one of my reverend. And they are nursing it. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Mabarikia. Are you blessed at the back? Amen. I know some of the people, they thought that was just, uh, that was not what we came for. Now, let me give you what you came for. My message this morning is entitled Unaitua. Adjudicating. 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 Uh, adjudicate. <laughs> <laughs> adjudicating for long term personal and family challenges and access to your perpetual covenant of peace. Adjudicating for long-term personal and family challenges and access to your perpetual covenant of peace. I'm going to use two main scriptures. The one is Isaiah 54 verse 1 and the second one is, uh, let me get my glasses here, uh, is, uh, Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. But just before I do that, as you are told, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for many years. And I so I want just to take a bit of time to do a good introduction. We all know about cases. We know about courts. We know about justice. So nobody is in the dark as far as that is concerned. Some of us who are in business, at the beginning of the year, when we are doing our budget, we put a legal fee. 
which will pay advocates. Ambazo tutalipa mawakili. Even if we don't hope to do anything wrong. Hata kama hatunui kufanya makosa. Even if we are not planning to go to court. Hata kama hatupangi kwenda Even if we are dealing with good people. Hata kama tunafanya kazi na watu wazuri. We put a fee. Tunaweka kando. Every time we are entering into a, a transaction. Kila wakati tunaingia katika makubaliano. Any transaction. Makubaliano yoyote. We get a, a lawyer and they write things down so that they are documented according to the law of the land. Because I transact in different countries and continents, the lawyers will always ask me which jurisdiction in this case or if you have an issue where is it going to be adjudicated? So these legal exercises are real. They are things that work on a daily basis. If you listen to, if you look at, uh, you watch news, you find today in Mirimani Court, in uh, Gekomba Court, I think there is another one, and then you know the High Court, and uh, before you get to the High Court, you go to the Court of what? Court of Appeal. Or uh, whichever, you know all those courts. I, I, I don't want to waste your time. But what, I'm, but what I'm trying to say, everything we see on earth, it has a replica in heaven. There is something in heaven that demonstrates everything we go through. But I've realized, as human beings, there are things that happen on earth that we put a lot of value and other things we ignore. I remember one time I was told by a business partner that not having a legal representative is entering into the business world blind. Because there is no way you do business all your life without needing legal representation. Similarly, oh, and maybe let me take you back a bit. Uh, when I was growing up, there was a program called Vionja Mahakamani. Anybody wakati nilikuwa, used to follow that? Wakati nilikuwa nalelewa, kuna kipindi kilikuwa kidaitu wa Vionja Mahakamani. Iko mpaka leo. Okay, if, oh, iko mpaka leo? Mm -hmm. Mama Kayai, bado iko? Mm -hmm. Nao engine masaku. <laughs> And the others have not seen it for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. But then, yes, it is there. So you can imagine it's an old program. And there were, there were people that were constant. One of them was the judge. Moja alikuwa ni judge. The second one was the prosecutor. Wapili alikuwa ni kiongozi wa there was always a, a, a mushukiwa. Uh -huh. <laughs> the one who has been accused. Kuna yule ni mushukiwa. There was that who was going to give witness. Kuna wale mashahidi. So that was a typical scenario. For us as Christians, it didn't make sense. It was not part of our Christian upbringing. Nobody helped us to understand what it is and what happens in a courtroom. But I remember in 1984, I was, uh, I was given a, a, a sponsorship to go to World of Life Kabeta Camp. World of Life. And when I was given that, I had to memorize, uh, I think there were 20 verses. So, uh, so that I could get the sponsorship. And one of them which was very powerful Namboja, was saying, I write to you my little children so that you may not sin. But if you do sin, we have an advocate who sits in the throne our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So it was inevitable that God may bring to my attention in my early teens that there is a court that goes on. And in that court, issues are adjudicated. And those issues that are adjudicated, they either get me guilty Guilty, or I get evacuated. We were taught that if I say, if I don't sin, I'm a liar. 
Mimi ni mwongo. And I make God a liar. Mungu awe mwongo. Therefore, kwa hiyo, I'm naturally kwa kwa a sinner. Mimi ni mwenye dhambi. I do sins of commission Mimi and na sins kutenda, of omission. Na zingine za Sometimes I might know Sometimes I may not know. Sometimes I enter into a sinful environment. Wakati I enter into a sinful environment. Instantly. Instantly. I get into sin. Sometimes I wake up. Wakati mwingine naamka. As soon as I open my eyes. Punde ninapofungua mkono wangu. I sin. Naona. Paul said. Paul anasema. I do what I don't want to do. Nafanya kile sitaki kufanya. And what I want to do na I don't nataka, do. Na kile nataka kufanya sitaki. Therefore, kwa hiyo, if we talk of a God of justice. Tukinenea Mungu wa haki. There is a legal system in heaven. Na kuna haki kule bingu. Therefore, obvious. Na kwa hivyo ni dhahiri. That there is a case kwamba kuna kesi goes to the court ambao huingia kotini kila siku on your behalf kwa ajili yako because the bible says maana biblia inasema our accuser mshtaki wetu the devil shetani is lowering anatembea like a lion kama seeking whom he may devour kama simba akimtafuta atakayemla the bible so. Mm. so consistently hivyo kila wakati the accuser mshtaki the prosecutor yule ambaye anaongoza mashtaka EACC the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the EACC they are, they are looking for corrupt people wanatafuta watu ambao ni wafisadi they are looking for people who are failing wanatafuta watu ambao wanashinda they are looking for people who have done wrong wanatafuta watu wamefanya makosa they are key performance indicators kuna mambo ambayo inaonyesha key performance indicators kuna mambo ambayo ni muhimu inaonyesha is how many people New, uh, have they prosecuted how many people have you prosecuted in corruption? How many people have you prosecuted in tax evasion? How many people have you prosecuted in child abuse? In domestic abuse? And when now they look through, they say, we were so successful because we were able to arrest a hundred fornicators. I was joking. I wanted to know whether you are following me. They cannot prosecute a fornicator. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I, I just wanted to know you're following. So the point I'm trying to make that we are guilty as charged. So if kusema kwamba sisi tunahatia kama tulivyoambiwa. Hallelujah. Amen. But then what does that look like? Lakini hiyo inakaaje? Let's come to our main text. Everybody go with me is uh, Isaiah 54 verse 1. This is the year of threshing mountains. Me have just come to thresh one. That is called barrenness. I want to show you how barrenness happens. I want to show you the process of being barren. And I want to show you that how that can be dealt with in the courtroom of heaven. The Bible says. The Bible says. Sing, Imba. O barren. Sing, O barren. Imba, wewe ulie tasa. You who have not born, wewe usie za. break forth Paza sauti yako. into singing Kwa kuimba. and cry aloud. Piga kelele. You who have not labored with a child, wewe usie kuwa na for more kuzana. are the children of the dissolute Mana, watoto wako ni wengi. than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Kuliko watoto wake, ye alie na mume. This uh, scripture 54, Isaiah 54, is one of the, my most favorite scripture. Because it addresses perpetual issues. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what I'm trying to say this morning, this afternoon, is that barrenness. Is not equivalent to your position. Utasa hautoshani na nafasi yako. You are delivered by God even before you are born. Umbe kumbolewa na mungu hata kabla uzaliwe. And therefore, although you could be experiencing barrenness, ni hivyo ingawa unapakumbana na utasa. That's not your position. Your position is many children. Your position is to have more children than that who has many children. So what is the gap? What is the gap? 
Because this prophecy was written before you are born. So when you are born, you are supposed to step out. You are not to experience barrenness. Remember barrenness is a situation in life that makes you not produce. In, a, in ordinary English uh, dictionary, Katika ya dictionary ya kingereza, it says that it's the state of usual is is the state of having no children or being unable to have children. Inasema ni hali ya kutokuwa na watoto ama hali ya kutopata watoto. It is also described as infertility. Pia inaelezewa kuwa utasa. Stality. Uh, kukosa kusa. So, the state of being unable to produce. Ni ile hali ya kutoza. In a woman, it is the inability to conceive. In a man, is in the inability to impregnate. So, what I started to do is to investigate. If you are going to prosecute a case, you must have investigators. And if you feel that the government is not giving you justice in the investigation, you get private investigators or private detectives. So I was looking at my personal journey. And I realized that I'm a man who walks with a lot of favor. I have a lot of insight. I have a lot of wisdom. I have a lot of understanding. I can sit anywhere. I can go to Gekomba and be comfortable. I can go to Kayole and Kalyubangi and be comfortable. But I also go to State House and I'm comfortable. I go to, to Her Majesty or His Majesty the King in the Paris, Buckingham, and I'm comfortable. But there was something that was missing. There was something that was missing. So I looked at it. I investigated. And I investigated. And I realized. Every time. I'm about to make a breakthrough. When God gives me an idea. And he gives me favor. And he gives me direction. And he gives me insight. Immediately. Pale, pale. When I'm about to take off, something kupa, happens. Kitu the accuser of the brethren comes with an accusation that is a valid accusation and presents it in the court of heaven. And I'm judged. And I'm judged as presented. Kama vile, uh, so I asked God, God, are you not supernatural? Are you not the creator of heaven and earth? And you know me from my childhood. I've been faithful. I've been good. I've been kind. What is happening? And the Lord took me to the justice system of heaven. He reminded me that in heaven, things don't operate anyhow. In heaven, things are not haphazard. In heaven, you don't just get what you need to get. He reminded me one day when I was invited in Buckingham Paris. I was given a complete list of what to bring, what to wear, where to park, how to enter into the gate. So, although I had an invitation that Her Majesty the Queen had commanded the Lord Chambry to invite Dr. Lucas Jenga uh -huh. into the Buckingham Paris, I had to follow some protocols. There was a system. There was a procedure. And if I failed in each of any of those processes, mm -hmm. I'll get to the gate and I'll be told, yes, we can see the card. Mm -hmm. But what about the suit? We can see the card. But what about X? What about Y? Somebody say a big amen. Amen. What I'm bringing to you 
is the justice of God and the courtroom of heaven. Time serves me to go scripture after scripture. But let me tell you when God hit the liberation on me. I started looking on the internet and there was messages everywhere. I started looking at the Bible and there was so much. But I asked God, why are people not talking about it? And the Lord says, the God of this world has blinded them. So that they may not understand. So they will be singing the way we used to sing when we were young. We used to go like this. Twaingia Jerusalem mupia. I'm not a singer. Twaingia, twaingia, twaingia. And then you look, they are not entering anywhere. Uh -huh. There is no change. But Hakuna singing, mabadliko. they are singing. Wanaimba, and dancing, wanaimba. they are dancing. Wanacheza, they are very wanacheza. excited mm -hmm. about the possibilities of getting to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But there is a gap. Wherever you go, there is a gap. Popoto so, wendapo panamuanya. So, listen to we were praying and fasting for 21 days as a ministry. But before that, I got very unwell. And it was not a sickness. It was not a disease. It was a misdiagnosis. I had a Yeah. If, when I read, you know, I was at the last stage. So I got the first symptoms, uh, what do you call them? Side effect, number one, number two, number three, number four. So the last day, and I'm saying this with humility, I was going wish. to visit one of our church members. Mm -hmm. I was driving, and I lost my memory. And I'm driving, na, na and I don't know where I am. This is not something that happened a hundred years ago. It happened in June, June this year. I'm driving and I don't know where I am. And I'm driving and I don't know where I'm going. And I cried to God. I said, this is not my portion. Give me an answer. Right here and right now. I spoke to one of my cousins. I don't know why I called her. And she told me, go and read the prescription of the medication you are taking. You read, read. When I read, I realized when I was going to America, I told you I, was, I went to state, uh, to White, uh, what is it called, White House. I got so tired. I was so exhausted. And I asked myself, that's not like me. This is just a short flight from Glasgow to, 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 uh, to America. Why? Then I came to Kenya. And let me tell you, when I was here, I could not even drive. I was so exhausted. Then I, went, uh, 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 I was doing a tour in Europe. So we went to France, we went to Italy. By the time we were in Germany, my son can tell you, they were going to have fun. I couldn't leave the house. I was so tired. I remember when I landed and they were going to these beautiful places, I just said, go on your own. And I got angry. I got angry. God, this is not my portion. I'm young. I'm vibrant. I'm committed. I'm living 125 years. I'm not going to live like this. God, I want to know what is it that the devil is after. And not if there is anything in my life that the enemy has been claiming. Show me. The same cousin who told me to look at the prescription. She said there must be an accusation. She said there must be an accusation. There must be an accusation. And that accusation is right. And you have no power. But God has power. So I started to adjudicate. I started to investigate. And the word of God started to reveal to me that every time when the enemy gets access, he's given permission. Let's read the book of Job chapter 1. If you are there, you say amen. Amen. Mm. 
Yeah, just read for me because I'm not seeing it. If you see it before me, just open Job, Job verse 1, and I'll tell you where to stop. Chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah, verse, start from verse 1. No, start from like verse 4. Verse 4. Where, where the devil gets to heaven. Start where he gets to heaven. I think he gets to heaven at verse 3 or verse 4. Hallelujah. Are we together? This is a story you know very well. I'm not going to bore you with verse the details six. of all the stories. Uh, uh, have you found it? Verse 6. Yeah, just read for us. From verse 6. Job Ili, chapter uh, 1 from verse 6. Ni kitabu cha Ayubu moja kwanzea mstari wa sita. Amen. Read for us. Ilikuwa siku moja ambayo hao wana wa mungu walikuenda kujihudhurisha mbele za buwana. So, she, shetani nae, so, so, mm -hmm. the sons of God go to the throne every day. Wana wa mungu huenda kwenye kiti cha enzi kila siku. To represent their cases. Kuasilisha kesi zao. And to report. Na kufreta report. And to get in agreement with God. Na kukubaliana na mungu. So, go, go on. Shetani nae akaenda katiao. The devil also went in their midst. So now we know that the devil can go. <laughs> Sasa pia tunajua shetani anaezaenda. Mm -hmm. Bwana akamuuliza shetani, umetoka wapi wewe? Ndipo shetani akamjibu bwana na kusema, natoka katika kuzunguka zunguka duniani na katika kutembea huku na huku humo. Kisha bwana akamuuliza shetani, je, umemwangalia huyo mtumishi wangu Ayubu? Kwa kuwa hapana mmoja alie kama yeye duniani mtu mkamilifu na mwelekevu mwenye kumcha mungu na, ku, na kuepukana na uovu. Ndipo shetani akamjibu bwana na kusema, je, huyo ayubu yuamcha yu mungu bwana bure? Wewe humzungu, humzingira kwa ukigo pande zote, pamoja na nyumba yake na vitu vyote alivyo navyo. Kazi za mikono yake umezibarikia. Nayo mali yake umeongezeka katika nchi lakini nyosha mkono wako sasa uyaguze hayo yote alio nayo naye atakukufuru mbele za uso wako Amen let's stop there So we now know if you didn't know well that the devil is the accuser of brethren Sasa tunajua kama huku jua kwamba shetani ndio hushtaki wapendo And he does that always Na yeye ufanya hiyo kila wakati Everywhere Mahali popote. But the good thing, jambo nzuri, the devil is not omnipresent. Hayuko kila mahali. So he targets a case after the other. Hivo anafanya kesi, analeta kesi moja alafu nyingine. But we know tunajua, that our God in heaven mungu wetu has wabinguni. protected us perpetually. Ametulinda kila wakati. So what we need to understand Hivo tunapa, kila is why kuelewa, did the, the, the did the devil get an access to Job? And when we understand that, we can know how to prosecute our cases. We can know how to adjudicate our cases. And especially the long-term cases. Hannah was barren. And she was barren for a long time. But she did not understand why. But one day, in her barrenness, and in her struggle, and in her difficulties, she knew the husband can do anything he wants, the priest could do anything he wanted, anybody could do anything they wanted, but when the problem is prolonged, people settle. Watu hutumia. And they agree. And they say that is the nature. Na wanasema, hivyo what is more ilivyo. than you? Nini kina That's okay. Hiyo ni sawa. Everybody goes through the same. Kila mtu upitia hayo. What are you talking about? Unacheza nini? Those challenges you are having. Iyo, iyo magumo na ayo. Many people are having them. Watu wengi wanayo. So we settle. Hiva unatulia tu. Bishop, you are so pressed. <laughs> you live in Kenya sometimes. You live in UK sometimes. You go to the US. What is your problem? Unasema askofu umebarikiwa mara uko Kenya mara uko ngambo. You are okay. Wewe uko sawa. Even in churches we are made to feel okay. Hata kanisani tunafanya kwa sababu makes you feel okay. Family yako na feel sawa. They feel they feel is okay. Wanafaka tu sawa. If it's your family. Kama ni familia yako. It is so obvious like now my family. Kama familia yangu. My grandmother on the side of my mother. Nyanya yangu wa upande wa mama. Her mother died when she was young. 
Mama yake alikufa akiwa mchanga. My grandmother died young. Ma, mchanga. My mother died young. Mama yangu akafa akiwa mchanga. Is that a coincidence? Je, hiyo ni hali ilitukia. No, somebody goes and accuses our ah, family. Ah, kuna mtu anaenda na kushtaki familia yetu. A root cause. Na lazima kuwe kuna chanzo. They have chanzo. a justice case. Kuna hali ambayo yeye ana haki. They come in front of God. Anaweza kuja mbele za Mungu. They able to trace it to your great grandfather. Na wanaweza kuja mpaka kwa babu yako mkuu. They come to your village. Mhm. I'll give you a typical illustration. You may not like me. But I say this. You know in this country, Kenyans are good at talking. And sometimes they talk anyhow. I don't know whether there is a word in English which is called anyhow. I would like to say they talk anyhow. So when it comes to the president, they talk. And they like talking. They can talk for hours. God shut one of our churches. Because it was a Kenyan church in Scotland. We used to feed the people. Everybody who came the way you have come would feed all of them. But instead of having a fellowship after eating, they would start talking Kenyan politics. And they would become so energized. So the Luos would sit on their side and they would be so energized. Politically, the Kikuyus would sit and they would talk all the Kikuyus. And God got angry and spoke to one of our members and told her to tell me I'm shutting this church because these people are talking carelessly about their government and they don't even live in Kenya. They don't even know the details. But they just follow it now and they talk about it. You know many things that we talk today, we don't even have facts. But that is, those of you who don't know, when you get a policeman stop you, or they come to your house, they normally say, whatever you say can be used against you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say can be used against you. If you say something about your children can be used against you. I don't know about my son. Oh, he's such a careless boy. He's such a careless whatever. Can be used by the devil against you. I don't know about my money. I don't know about this. We come from a poor family. Can be used against you. The Bible says the devil comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Job used to fear and he would say just in case my children when they went to party they drank so much and when they were so drunk they cast more. it was used against him everything that he had was used against Job me so many things were being used against me. Because sometimes the Lord will bless me so much. And I will say to my wife, this one we are not going to tell anybody just in case. He won't tell me. And then the devil would come. Because I said, just in case. Hey! You are not getting the point. You say, this car, I want to secure it nicely just in case. The devil comes after the car. This bank, I'm going to protect it just in case. Mm -hmm. The devil comes and steals because you gave him an in case. Mm -hmm. And he uses your in case against you. You are prosecuted because you are careless. The Bible says there is power of life and death in your mouth. So you already know that. And you are now being prosecuted mm -hmm. because you know that there is power of life and death in your mouth and you use your mouth to say things that will contravene the purposes of God, the beauty of God, the grace of God, mm -hmm. the desires of God, yes. the, the, the destiny of your nation, the destiny of your family, the destiny of your properties and your assets. May the Lord have mercy. Amen. Amen. We say things and we open court cases. We do things and we open cases. Is we 
Sisi wa kikusi juu nani aliturooga? Inatumiwa kinyume na wewe. That was an illustration. I'm not saying that. Hiyo ni kuonyesha tu lakini sisemi hivyo. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just using words that are very common. Natumia maneno ambayo ya kawaida. I know the Lord is provoking you. Na tunapolena najua Mungu anakukoroga. Kuna mambo Mungu anakuonyesha. When I said I'll live 125 years. Niliposema naishi miaka 125. Somebody said something. Mtu alisema kitu. What about if you get so sickly and so tired? Na ukiwa, and so you have a lot of pain. Na ukiwa na uchungu mwingi, umechoka sana, una mgonjwa. Will you still want to live? Bado utataka kuishi? You know I, I, I should have cancelled that right then. Unajua ningefuta hiyo hapo hapo. But I did not cancel. Lakini sikuifuta. So the devil started to use it against. Hivyo shetani akaanza kuitumia kinyume yangu. So the first thing that happened I was in Malindi. I enjoy Malindi. Ni kwa pale Malindi nafurahia. Our father had sent me somewhere. Baba yetu alikuwa amenituma mahali. Nikaenda nikaanguka. And I got so much pain. Nikawa na uchungu mwingi. So I was not walking properly. Hivyo singetembea vizuri. Remember a week since this person said that. Na hikuwa wiki haikuisha tangu huyo mtu aseme hivyo. I used to do an MOT just in case. Mm -hmm. You don't know what an MOT. Some of you may know. Anybody who knows what an MOT? When cars are going in the UK, every year they have to be done. What is it, Michael? MOT. Huh? It's something to do with roadworthiness. So your car has to be roadworthy. Hiko, every year you have to do a roadworthy. Uh, kule, kule Scotland, kila mwaka lazima uchunguze gariza, lako ujue kama ni sawa kuenda barabarani. So, Kwa hiyo, me, I went for a roadworthiness. Mimi nikaenda kuchunguza. I was not feeling anything. Siku anajiisi suchote. They checked. Hmm. They said your eyesight is good. Wakaangalia kwa nisema macho ni sawa. Your ears are good. Masikio wako ni sawa. Your blood pressure is good. Pressure wako ni sawa. Your cholesterol is good. Mafuta ni sawa. But there's something small we can see very far. Lakini kuna kitu tunaona mbali. Diabetes. But it's not, it's not dangerous. It's not risky. Arthritis. Sio mbali. Uh, no, diabetes. Ah, sukari. Kisukari. Sukari. Lakini kasukari ni kadogo. Kako mbali. Mm. But let's give you Lakini wacha some tukupe. tablets. Madawa. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. I got, and they didn't give me a few. Wali ni patia ni libeba na mkoba. A lot. They gave me a lot of them. I took the tablets. I started to get tired. I started feeling sleepy. I could not concentrate. I started having pains. So it was only one pain. So I started having pains everywhere. Then, I started losing memory. According to the prescription, uh, the, the, the paperwork, you know, they tell you the side effect. Said, if you start losing memory, the next thing is a coma. I can give you that paper. So I was for a coma just in case. Our court of heaven adjudicates. Yetu ya binguni, and I want to say three things. I know I can't tetea. finish this sermon. I know our daddy will invite me again to continue. And if I don't get a chance to come and continue, mm -hmm. the Lord is telling me to do a document, mm -hmm. uh, to put it on, 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 on YouTube yes. so that people can get it. Amen? Thank you. So I'm coming towards the end. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to summarize what I had today. Na so number one, kisha. I've told you that barrenness is not a God's plan. If there's things in your life that you've been trusting God and Bishop preaches, he prophesies, you give an offer, you do everything, and you're not seeing a breakthrough, that barrenness is an accusation of the devil. Kama kuna mambo maisha ni mwako, umekua ukingojea, askofu anaubiri, anaomba, unatoa, na haujaiona, kuna mtu anakushitaki. The other accusation that comes along barrenness is the fact that every time a child is born, they die before their time. Jashtaka lingine, kuhusu utasa ni kwamba, kila wakati mtoto wakizaliwa, anakufa akiwa mchanga. And I'm not talking just of children physical. Na sinenei kuhusu tu watoto wakuonekana. Myself, I've started big and mighty things. Mimi mwenye ni meanzisha mambo makubwa ya. Some of these things, when you come at their inception, you say, wow. Haya mambo ukikuja nikianzisha utasema tu wow. After four, five years, I realized they don't get the same glory anymore. Baada ya miaka mitatu, minne, mitano, naona kwamba hayana utukufu kama ule tena. 
And the Lord told me that that was an accusation on the side of my father. That my grandfather, in those days, he would go to Rift Valley and get a lot of goats. A lot of goats. And when he came to this area you called Uplands in the Kiambu County, you know that area where there's TVC going all the way to the Uplands Bacon Factory? One, land, one acre of land used to cost one goat. But you'd come with a thousand. And you'd go back without an acre. So people who see him when he arrives on a, the train, he's carrying his goats, they say, wow. But then, Lakini, he died a miserable death. He never, had an acre. he never had an acre. My grandfather on my mother's side, they kept on being moved. Wherever they got a piece of land, shamba, the government would say that's forest. They would go to another place. We are building a railway. They would go to another place. And they kept on being moved until they were moved out of the country. To Tanzania. They flourished there for a few years. And then the other said, I don't want these Kenyans. They lost everything. Even the crop that was in the farm. So I went to heaven's gate. Heaven's gate. And I said, God, I've known what has happened. But I don't know what to do. And the Lord told me about the courtroom of heaven. God told me how to adjudicate. And that's what I want to tell you. This, this is the direction I want to help you with. That's number one. We must never give the accuser an opportunity. Read with me the book of uh, Peter. Uh, let me just get it right. Uh, sorry. There's something that is happening every time. Yeah, Peter 5 8. First and second. The Bible says, The devil is shrewd and subtle. He is our adversary. So Peter is telling us, be sober, listen to me. The way to adjudicate in this case, number one, is to be sober. Somebody says sober. And the way to be sober is to study the word of God. To pray according to the word of God. To align yourself with the word of God. I realized that it's so easy in the marketplace where I dwell a lot to be casual. To be casual. People start talking. They enter into a debate about politics. They say the economy of Kenya is corrupting. Kenya will not see another five years. And you don't say anything. You just go like that. Whether you say it or not, you have participated. But when you are a rat, if you don't want to be controversial, if you don't want to argue, you just say, I'm sorry. I was here but my time is finished. Excuse me, I want to go to the toilet. Excuse me. I do it all the time. And when you excuse yourself, you don't just go and sit. You go and cancel. Our country will flourish. Our president is a good president. The wife of our president is a good wife. There is no corruption in Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, I kill it from the root. I destroy the works of darkness. Whether you go to the toilet, or wherever you will go. I have survived. And I want to tell you that God is teaching me if I'm not in a coma now that I must tell you so that you are able to prosecute in the kingdom, in the courthouse of God. Number two, be vigilant. Soberness is not enough. When my father anointed me last year, it was a lot of oil. You know, it was beautiful. 
Nilimwagua mafuta mengi alikuwa mazuri. But as I moved there I had the spirit saying. Lakini nilipotoka pale nikasikia roho na nambia. Hiyo haikuwa tendo tu. This is a beginning. Huu ni mwanzo. The anointing is now on you. Upako sasa uko juu yako. What you do with the anointing is up to you. Kile utafanya na huo upako ni juu yako. Immediately the Lord told me to start a perpetual morning prayer. Pale pale Mungu akaniambia nianzisha maombi ya asubuhi bila kukoma. So I started at 5. Hivyo nikaanza saa 11. Sometimes I'm forced to start at 4. Sometimes at three. And the more vigilant I've become, those plans of the devil are now being exposed. I went for a holiday with one of my doctors. He told me it's not a coincidence. This medication has now been attempted on you four times. Four times. The first three he was my doctor, so he used to cancel. And he would call me and say, if you get this medicine, don't take. I didn't understand. But two of other bishops died in Scotland. Just like that. Just like that. So the Lord started to reveal to me when I was vigilant. That when we go overseas, the life is so comfortable. You get everything you want. You are driving a sports Mercedes. You are staying in a six-bedroom house. You are having all these good things. So you can sleep. It's too cold anyway. Even if you go to church, nobody will have arrived. Actually, even if you arrive in church at, uh, at 11, you still have to wait for another half an hour before anybody comes. So why do you bother? Well, mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the me. Lord has revealed to me, Bwana, me and I'm so passionate na na... about the insights and the liberation that I'm going to inquire of the Lord on every situation. I will inquire of the Lord in every circumstance because the hali. only reason that David became a man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. the Bible says he inquired of the Lord. Sababu ambao Daudi alifanyika kuwa mtu ambayo anafuata moyo wa Mungu ni kwa sababu alikuwa anamuuliza Mungu kila kitu. And we realize even one time he asked God, which town would I go to? And God said, go to Judah. It was enough. And Scotland. Mm -hmm. You look for the best city in Scotland, Glasgow. It's enough. Mm -hmm. But he went back again. And he said, when I get to Judah, Nikai Wapi. Mm -hmm. Where do you want me to stay? Unataka in Judah. Wapi Judah. We have to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. Yes, God has said it. God has spoken it. It has settled it. But don't be too quick to act. Get more clarity from God. Mm -hmm. Be vigilant. Yes. You cannot be vigilant unless you are constantly praying. You cannot be vigilant unless you are reading the word of God. You cannot be vigilant if you have become these families that watch their... Nowadays, they have become so clever. We almost got tempted with my wife, but we were able to overcome. You know, you go to bed now, because you don't have enough time to listen to all these things that happen for two, three minutes. Reels. To reels. Hapa kidogo. Kabla akajaisha. Aka kengine. Aka kengine. Aka kengine. Aka kengine. Unafikisha sasapa ya usiku kwa. Hini atadireka. Hello, are we together? Yes. Ama ni mimi tu na kuwala na temptation kama yo. Niko hivo. So, you get these things and the devil knows. Because the devil is targeting the entertainment industry. He's targeting the financial industry. He's targeting the political world. Every world. And he's making, if you think that you are so successful because you are not politicking, you are brought into these funny things. And you start with the Christian ones. So you see Bishop Mark two minutes, Ayado pe two minutes, you see the other one, Arankiuna two minutes, unaendelea, unafurai, alafu wanatupa kamustiana hapo, wanatupa katikitu kingine hapo, na unasema, ah, yo, shitwe, shitwe, unayipereka. Lakini umeona, and then inafika pa lingine inakuwa automatic, unasema, sa ingine wanakosa the important one. Be vigilant, somebody say be vigilant. Uwe macho. We are going to a court of heaven. And what we are presenting in the court of heaven has a strategy. Na hii koti ya mahakama ya binguni ya na lengo. Ina muelekea. So, be sober, be vigilant. Mwe na kiasi na kukesha. Those are very critical aspects. Hilo mi vitu viva muhimu sana. Let us read together the book of Hebrews chapter 
sorry, excuse me. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. I could have gone through all the courtrooms of heaven, but I don't have enough time. But I'll just mention them quickly, and I'll come to the main. The Hebrews 12 is the main court. But the first court of heaven is a court of mediation, where you go and mediate with God on your own behalf and on behalf of your family. Mm -hmm. The other court is the court of rec reconciliation, where you are reconciling before the case, get, get the case gets to where it needs to get. But this one is the fourth one. I'm just going a bit fast because I've realized time is far much gone. And this is the court of Mount Zion. Somebody say court of Mount Zion. Court of Mount Zion. Now that one, all of us have to go to the court of Mount Zion. So, lazima tuende katika mahaka mahaya ya Mount Zion. And this is what the Bible says. Na hivi ndivyo Biblia inasema. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, mm. to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Somebody say a big amen. Amen. So we are not lingalingaling. So, sisi hatugaagaitu. We know where we are going. Tunajua, we know who we are aligning with. Tunajua, tunajua we know what is our expectation. Tunajua we know yaki. who is our company. Tunajua we know who is our wetu. representative. Tunajua nani so we need to enter and settle in that place. Hivo na mahali pale. I was so delighted when uh, the new government came into power. Sana ma, uh, we were in our season of prayer and fasting in Scotland. Yetu ya na kufunga pale Scotland. When the church leaders went to State House, Wakati, uh, pale read by our father, Dr. Wak Mark Karioki. Na baba yetu, Bishop Mark Karioki. And they were told, get in. Go to every place. Kila mahali. Do everything you want to do. Kila Speak in tongues. You know, I jumped into that. You know me, I always, when, when my father is somewhere, I always jump into it. But immediately that day, two things happened. I was invited to come and apply for a senior government of, uh, position that day. And the second thing, the Lord invited me. To ask for a big position in heaven about this nation. But because I was not told either all, I said I'll take both. So I took the next flight. Oh no, I first of all did the application when I was in Scotland. I did all the application. And I landed. And the person who had called me was very senior. So I went to see him. And he said, you know, for you, there are so many opportunities. There is this one and this one and that one. But this one has more influence than this one. So you, 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 you look. And this is a serious influential person. So immediately he said that I started fasting. I told my team, let's start a group called Taking Territories. Because I've been told the jobs I can do, the senior positions I can do, there are so many. I've been told, I've been told, I've been told, I've been Yes. So I said to my people, Yo, that's not something to take for granted. Because a kingmaker cannot be a king. So what God is saying, I cannot be one CS. I cannot be one PS. This person has told me that you can do so many things. Why should I sacrifice so many things to do one thing? So I, formed the group. I formed the group. And we said we are going to take all those territories. And we have been doing it. But immediately, the Lord revealed to me that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent must take it by force. He migrated me. He migrated me back in time. 
kule nyuma muda wakati ulipoanza wakati uliambiwa utakuwa mfalme Daudi aliambiwa atakuwa mfalme and when he took me back there na aliponirudisha huko he told me that David took a lot of time in the wilderness aliniambia kwamba Daudi alichukua muda mrefu kule nikani and then he went and killed Goliath halafu akaenda akaua Goliath and then he went out again halafu akatoka tena and he spent many years akatumia miaka mingi he fought many battles he struggled and this got his happened but David was in line with his legal position. Lakini Daudi alikaa sawa sawa na hali yake ya ki He was constant. But when the time came for him to become a king. Wakati wake ulipofika kuwa mfalme. He also took several years. Alichukua miaka mingi. Bring everybody together. Kuwaleta kila mtu pamoja. To make the whole kingdom united. Kuunganisha ufalme wote. So the Lord told me. Hivyo Mungu akaniambia. What everybody is getting excited kile watu wote wanasisimka kuhusu kilifanyika Yerusalemu but that's not the thing lakini hiyo sio jambo ni vile tutasukuma kutoka kwa umsisimko kwa uhalisi from being excited about god's victory kutoka kusisimka na ushindi wa Mungu to being kwa kuwa in a position where kenya is recognized ambao kenya inatambulika important nation in the entire continent of africa kama nchi iliyo ya muhimu sana katika afrika uh, you're not getting my point mm-hmm. so the lord told me that's a journey bwana akaniambia hiyo ni safari and it took 10 years na inaweza tumachukua miaka it will take 10 years itachukua miaka 10 from 2022 kuanzia mwaka 2022 hadi 2032 so i'm not worried When I see all these commotions, when I see the Gen Zs, when I see the politicians, when I see the movements, it doesn't affect me. I know that I went to the courtroom of heaven and the case has been adjudicated and Kenya will be the most important nation in the continent of Africa. Amen. And will continue to push. People will say, people will keep quiet, people will sleep, people will arise, people will fall until the purposes of God are established in this nation. Amen. So being vigilant means consistency. It means persistence. It means focus. It means clarity. It means precision. Precision nile uhalisi and it means professionalism na inahitaji utaalamu so in conclusion in conclusion tunapotamatisha how many times yet you say in conclusion is it 1 2 3 4 5 how many <laughs> you know now I've, I've, i've learned that in conclusion doesn't come once even jesus himself you say and as i finish and then you'd get another revelation and he would continue for another five minutes but for me i don't want to keep you more than necessary i want to help us from now here right now to start transacting since i started in earnest i've seen things being aligned in the way i've never known and i've seen so much clarity sometimes god wakes me at 3 a.m and he shows me what's going to happen and then i wake up and i see that's what is in the news he shows me what is going to happen in business uh, i'll tell you something quickly uh, and my team here can witness when our president was invited for the state visit to america wakati rais wetu alialikwa katika kutembea marekani i was one of the people who was in, invited to go with him ili mmoja wapo wa watu ambao alialikwa waende na yeye but the lord revealed to my team lakini bwana akafunulia kikundi changu that is going to use that trip kwamba shetani atatumia hiyo jambo to try and destroy this nation kujaribu kuharibu nchi hii and to try and kill the president na kujaribu kumuua rais so that happened before the state visit about a month before the visit happened hivyo hiyo ilifanyika mwezi mmoja kabla ya kutoka so i called all my intercessors around the world nikaita waombezi wangu wote ulimwenguni and i said to them if there is a time to pray nikawaambia ikiwa kuna wakati wa kuomba ni sasa so there is an attempted assassination kuna kujaribiwa kuwa there is attempted uh, coup kuna kujaribu kuvindua serikali nikawaambia kila kitu ambacho kinajaribiwa nchi lakini hatukujua ni kwa nini but when the trip was finished because i went to every place that the trip happened na wakati ile isha maana nilienda kila mahali when the trip was finished before even people started to complain about the aeroplane and to complain about everything i already knew exactly what is happening next so we called again for prayer and fasting 
Tukaita kila mtu aombe na kufunga. So in your courtroom you have several responsibilities. Katika mahakama yako una majukumu kadhaa tofauti. So there's your personal responsibility. Kuna jukumu lako wewe mwenyewe. There's the responsibility for your family. Kuna jukumu la familia yako. There's the responsibility for your church. Kuna jukumu la kanisa. There's the responsibility for your nation. Kuna jukumu la taifa. And these have to be aligned. Hii yote lazima iwekwe sawa sawa. And they have to be consistently aligned. Na lazima kila wakati ikae imewekwa. And when you walk in perfect commitment to God. Na wakati unatembea katika kujitolea kikamilifu kwa Mungu. The last part. Uh, Isaiah uh, 54 verse 10. Go with me Isaiah 54 verse 10. Twende Isaia 54 mstari wa 10. And when you go home please read the whole of Isaiah 54. It's my theme is my theme uh, scripture from now from uh, uh, October all the way to December. For the mountains somebody say for the mountains. For the mountains shall depart. Shall be and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you nor shall my covenant of peace be removed says the Lord who has mercy on you. Somebody say amen. Amen. Once you align yourself. Wakati unajiweka sawa sawa. Once you sing for joy. Once you enter into the courtroom of heaven with rejoicing in your heart. Once you enter into the court of heaven even though you are barren, even though things are not evident, even though things are not working the way you'd like them to work, but as you enter into the throne room of God you enter with singing you are crying and shouting for joy let me tell you my brothers and sisters every mountain will be removed Amen. every force will be put aside Amen. everything that has worked against your destiny mm. will be brought down and as that happens it will also happen for your family as it happens for your family it will happen for for your church As it happens for your church it will happen for your nation. As it happens for your nation you become an international influencer. You become an international Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm seeing it. I'm living it. I'm enjoying it. And although the challenges have not stopped, I can see that my file mustakiwa umeshitakiwa na mashitaka 49. Those were the first mashitaka. I've seen the file reducing and all of them I'm being acquitted in the name of Jesus Amen. I'm being acquitted Amen. all what I need is the revelation mm. all what I need is the insight yes. as soon as I get revelation I go to my advocate na muambia kwa hiyo file yangu ongeza haka Ninaenda tena in the same file nasema ongeza haka I was talking to my father and my father has told me that they were involved in this kind of thing ongeza my father ameniambia this community ambapo walikuwa naishi wote walikuja pamoja wakaenda wakamuingilia wakamfukuza jirani enda uongeze somebody say amen amen and as you get these revelations and as you present your cases to father as you present your cases to the advocate you know that he's a righteous advocate and you know that your legal fees have been paid and you know that God is not a respecter of person mm. he who comes to God in humility he who comes to God by faith is assured of things that are hoped for amen so this morning uh, this afternoon i want to conclude my message by saying that we have a courtroom and we have an advocate and we have an adjudicator we have the holy spirit who intercedes for us with sides that are too deep for word we are in a position of transition we are in a position of transformation so what you are looking for before was favor you got favor you want now that favor to manifest amen let me tell you these are just revelations that i get the people who have a lot of favor are by and large rejected god gives you so much favor such that you are able to educate your brothers and sisters you have so much favor you are able to bless your family you invite them to your house to come for weekends your family rejects you your neighbors reject you everybody rejects you and there is no reason is an attack of the accuser and they start to tell them oh you know your brother hey, 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 hey. you know that your brother he's so proud he's so arrogant and things like that the accuser these cases when you know about them don't start saying on a divorce or with the i'm not going to, uh, i'll not be going home i don't even want anything to do with them it is your responsibility to get the cases adjudicated because they are not valid and your judge will even say when they are valid yes one day you drove and you went past your village and you did not stop and they saw you and that's where they started you say god have mercy i just want to pray for us 
And let me tell you, these prayers I'm praying are from the bottom of my heart, mm. are from a pain that I've experienced as a person, a struggle that I've struggled with. Because God has been good to me. I experience great things, wonderful things, but I also sometimes I experience a lot of pain. Sometimes I experience a lot of struggle. And the Lord has been saying to me, for you to break through, it's not just your personal breakthrough. It's not just your personal joy. This is a corporate joy. So I don't know whether you are here and you agree with my journey. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you are here and these struggles are real and true to you. I don't know whether you are here and people look at you and think everything is okay. And yet, there's a lot of struggles inside. Mm -hmm. If you are one of the people I'm speaking to, I don't have enough time to ask everybody to come to the front. I know next week our daddy uh, will be blessing you be doing family transformation and I'll put that file in, that, in the other files that God will be dealing with. So I'll pray for you wherever you are today. But I want you to do what I did in 1988. When my father spoke about faith and I didn't have enough faith, I just jumped on his, uh, on his back. And I've enjoyed that now for 33 years. I want you to enjoy what God is doing. I want you to enjoy the freedom God is giving me. I want you to enjoy the breakthrough which is financial, emotional, social, which is family breakthrough, which is uh, acceptance, appreciation, uh, which is uh, a, a promotion, international travel, everything that you desire, everything that you deserve, everything that you have presented to God. Let's all stand up and wherever you are. We to are to see my I just want to give everybody a minute. Uh, just think of the file that you want to pre present in the presence of the Lord. Think of a situation that came alive as I was speaking. Think of difficulties that you know they are perpetual. They have been consistent in your life. Think of the struggles that have come and have made your life so difficult. Think of opportunities that you have always got. Sometimes you get so big opportunities. And as soon as you get the opportunities, the devil comes and steals away. You don't know what it is. It could be your children. Every time you just want to get something together in your family, the devil comes and brings sickness and disease. Some children have become wayward they have become alcoholics, others have become addicts, and you brought them in the house of the Lord, in the fear of the Lord, I want to tell you, it has nothing to do with your children. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your family. Because we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to a place uh, in the midst of many angels. A place uh, where God is judging and adjudicating on our cases. This is the main courtroom where we bring all our situations, where we bring all our struggles. And then after we have got that, uh, we we move in the goodness of God. We move in the humility of God. It is not by work. Our righteousness is of God alone. This morning, I want to decree and declare that as we open our hearts, as we present our cases to God, that heaven will speak. Heaven will speak on your behalf. The angels will speak on your behalf. Jesus Christ himself will be the righteous advocate. He will present your case. He will bring you to a position of forgiveness. Maybe the devil has been condemned condemning you because of your tithes and offerings. You have not been able to break through. Today the Lord is bringing an annulment. He's bringing a forgiveness. He's offering you an acquittal in the mighty name of Jesus so that you can start afresh. You can start being faithful. You can start being committed. You can start being dedicated. I can see somebody here who had a big business deal and when you succeeded you got all the money but your partner you did not give them enough share and you justified it because the church was being built you better give more to the church than give to your partner and your partner went into the accusation room and the devil uh, took that against you and it has been eating your assets, uh, eating your properties, eating what God has given you. I also see a family that has really been struggling. Every time they have a breakthrough, something comes, uh, a sickness, a disease, uh, uh, something comes, a legal case, uh, something comes from the auditors, uh, something comes from KRA. You are always having something that takes away your harvest, uh, that takes away what you have lived. Uh, I hear I hear the Lord saying, you are free in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, today you are in the courtroom of heaven and your accuser has been defeated. The accuser of 
brethren, according to the book of Revelation, has been defeated because you are overcoming by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says, and they overcame by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. I want you to speak positive because anything you say from today can be used against you. Guard your mouth, guard your heart with all diligence because out of your mouth comes, the, out of your heart comes issues of life. Refuse any bitterness, refuse any anger, however justified it is, whatever the origin, whatever the purpose, whatever the intention that put you into that position. I hear the Lord is saying, open yourself to heaven, open yourself to the purposes yes. of God. You have been politicking, you have talked about Ruto, you have talked yes. about Gashagua, you have talked about uh, Odinga, you have talked right. about Karonzo Musioka, Mother Karoa, you even talk as if you live in their neighborhood, you talk as if they are part of your family members. You talk as if you work in their offices. May the Lord have mercy. We are being acquitted of engaging in things that are not of God. We are being acquitted of being involved carelessly in our conversations, in our engagements, in our patronizing, in the mighty name of Jesus. I hear some of us have been involved in fornication and it's so hidden, and it's so hidden, nicely crafted. Nobody can even tell. Nobody can know, but the court is is convicting you because you think it's okay. You can sin and repent. You are a mature Christian. But remember, that can be put in your file for the rest of your life. There are others who are in public offices, working in the state offices, and we have become open to corruption. It is okay. It's the order of the day. And it has become the norm. The Father is saying, if a change is going to happen, it has to start in the house of the Lord. Let us purify ourselves. Let let us not give the devil a chance. Let us not have an open door. Let us not open to anything. Be taken to court. There is no bigger court than the court of heaven. Allow yourself to enjoy the goodness of God, the beauty of God, the purpose of God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Today, I will kill you and feed you into the parts of the air. Whatever accusation is a Goliath, whatever Accusation is a mountain. We are threshing you into chaff in the mighty name of Jesus. We are destroying you. We are rendering you powerless. We are defeating you in the mighty name of Jesus. Raba Baba Zika Baba Zika Raba Baba Zika Rabrosunda Rebo Bo Zika Baba Zika Raba Baba Zika Baba Zika Raba Baba Zika Raba Baba Zika Raba Sanda Mount Zion is a place of God's justice and judgment and this describes best the court of heaven we are all in that interaction with heaven everybody interact 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 everybody interact with heaven speak with heaven speak with heaven speak to heaven open yourself in heaven in jesus mighty name heavenly father we surrender into your presence we thank you lord for your faithfulness for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but your kindness shall not depart from us. Yes. Father, in your, in your wrath, mm. remember mercy. Yes. Remember mercy for us individually. Yes, Lord. Remember mercy for our father, mm. the bishop of this church, yes. and our mother, mm. Mama Joyce, oh God. Mm. Remember mercy to our reverend Dan mm. and her dear wife, Eva, mm. and all the family. Yes, father, remember mercy for every member of this congregation. Remember mercy for our nation. My father, we have failed you. You've been so good to us. We have had good rainfall. We have had great harvest. We have had so many good things. But we are a nation of complainers. We are a nation of people who murmur. We repent in your presence, O oh God. And Father, in your wrath, remember mercy. You are a kind God. Father, your kindness shall not depart from us. Nor your covenant of peace be removed. We pray that this morning, Lord, as we stretch all the mountains, mm. as we convert every mountain into chaff, mm. in this year of stretching the mountains, mm. we come to the courtroom of heaven. Mm. We present all our cases, the ones that we know and the ones that we don't know. Purify us, O oh Lord. Your word says, if your sins are red as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Mm. And therefore, we can be able to enter your throne because nobody can enter into your throne 
other than with righteousness and holiness and with a holy and pure heart. Help us that access. Father, I now speak on behalf of everyone here whose case is still on the courtroom, whose the devil is speaking the way he spoke on uh, for Job. Father, let this case be annulled. Yes, Lord. Annul every case mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. and amen. Celebrate the Lord better amen. in the house. Amen. Amen. Amen.